Before we begin, since this is a BBC-owned property, I feel the need to point out that the news arm of the BBC has a continuing issue with transphobic leanings in its news coverage. You can find in a pinned comment below various videos from both myself and other YouTubers covering this issue. And while I understand that the Doctor Who creative team is not responsible for this, I will continue to point this out for as long as it remains a consistent issue. Thank you. You know, given the fact that I'm a Doctor Who fan, I guess having too many thoughts on what's currently going on with Doctor Who is a good problem to have, but you know, I would like to actually get some other stuff done. All right, so this is a little bit of a follow-up to the video from two days ago. Oh, good grief. I used to do a video a day, like a couple years ago. But I also didn't do them at the quality I currently do them. So having now done this is, is kind of breaking me a little bit. But anyways, I talked about Disney getting involved with the distribution of Doctor Who. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to follow up on that with. Some things that I just didn't mention or didn't bring up either because I didn't think of them or I kind of realized a little bit after. And additionally, I want to tackle something that I just kind of completely glossed over. In terms of things that I didn't get to in that video, it's worth pointing out that while the actual announcements we have had so far that indicate that Disney Plus will start carrying Doctor Who in every territory other than the UK and Ireland, they have not in the announcements said that that includes the back catalog. Now, despite that, I did say it would include the back catalog, and I stand by that even though they have not explicitly stated, stated that because, frankly, there is way less value in only new episodes of Doctor Who. I mean, when HBO Max announced that they were going to be carrying Doctor Who, their big push was about, we have new episodes, but they also got the back catalog of modern era Doctor Who. And to be clear, I am talking about modern era because I don't expect Disney Plus to start carrying classic. Um, they might, I'd be surprised, but I would be stunned if they did not get the back catalog of modern era Doctor Who. There just isn't that much value in it without it. So... That, I assume, is happening, although many people point out in the comments, technically that is not confirmed, but I cannot imagine that's not the case. Next up, I was a little bit blasé about it coming off of HBO Max. Um, I think I failed to note that it was also going to be coming off BBC America. Now, one can debate whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, given that BBC America would run it with ads and, you know, maybe wasn't the best way to watch it in the first place. But I came at it in terms of my general attitude of, it's going to Disney Plus. Okay. But I came at that from the perspective of an American and also someone who already has Disney Plus. Now, in America, modern era Doctor Who has always been on paid channels, whether it be cable channels that you had to pay for as part of a cable package, like sci-fi, actually was briefly on, I think, Disney XD for Hot Minute, Hot Minute and then later on on uh, BBC America, or then on to HBO Max. One way or another, modern era of Doctor Who in America, we've always had to pay for it. Now, some classic stuff got aired for free on PBS, but that was like back in the 80s. But that's not the case everywhere. This actually is kind of a big impact on Australian fans of Doctor Who. The channel ABC, no relation to the ABC network in America that's owned by Disney, but their ABC channel that has always carried Doctor Who, and that is a free public broadcast channel. And they're now losing that ability to see it at no additional cost for some other service. And that's never happened in that country, and that really sucks. For those fans. Australia might not be the only country where that's the case, but that's the one I've seen it pointed out explicitly. So those are some things that I just flat out failed to mention. Next is the thing that I didn't really entertain, but I'm now going to. And that is, does Disney have any creative input? And if so, what might that look like? Well, in terms of that first thing, my gut instinct initially on reading anything about this deal was, no, they don't. This is a distribution deal. A distribution deal is not creative input. It doesn't get you involved in the production. That's not what that is. However, there was a write-up in the Daily Telegraph that seems to indicate otherwise. Now, it's been picked up by a few other outlets since then, all seeming to stem from the Telegraph. Before I get too far into this, let me say up front, 
I don't know if I actually trust this reporting from the Telegraph for a couple of reasons. One, I actually have very little respect for it as a paper overall. But even setting that aside, while they do have some quotes from Charlotte Moore, the chief content officer at the BBC, in relation to that deal, the article then spins off into a whole bunch of things that it says as definitively as things directly quoted from her, but without any associated quotes. So honestly, just looking at a piece of journalism, it seems like they made a lot of assumptions and published them as facts. But even if, even if this Telegraph article is not something that should be trusted and turns out to be BS, I think enough people are concerned about Disney possibly having input that I think it's worth at least talking about and exploring the possibility of what that might look like. Because there is one aspect that I kind of failed to note that is pretty unique to this. Disney has never put something onto Disney Plus that they didn't wholly own. This entire deal is actually very new for them. Like Disney has acquired a lot. They bought Pixar, they bought Lucasfilm, they bought Marvel, they bought most of Fox, and that forms the basis of what they have available on that service. And it's a lot of stuff. That's why they have a lot of things on there. But it's not like with Netflix or even a fair amount of stuff that's on something like HBO Max, where it's licensed material that could theoretically be taken off once the licensing agreement expires. Disney Plus hasn't hosted that kind of content before. So it is interesting that it's stepping a bit outside of what Disney normally hosts there. And that, that may indicate some desire to either have more control or possibly looking down the line to try and acquire the property. I don't think I'm going to go down that rabbit hole because that would probably require the privatization of the BBC first, which is not out of the question. It's something that... Uh, the Tory party, that's the conservative party there, certain members of it certainly have been pushing for for quite some time. But until that step happens first, the idea of selling off Doctor Who isn't really something that's on the table. So that is several steps down the hypothetical uh, trail, and I just don't really want to go any further down that. That having all been said, what The Telegraph reported that, again, I can't back up completely, but what they are saying is that Disney does not have any kind of final say. Um, instead, because they are contributing towards the production budget, that they are expecting to have some degree of creative input, even though core creative choices will be made by Russell T. Davis and he and Bad Wolf will have final creative say. That could parse if Disney is directly contributing. Now, like, in general, it, it doing the distribution gives money in, but it just gives money to the IP holder. So like they're paying the BBC for the rights to distribute this all over the place. That money doesn't have to fund directly into Doctor Who itself. The BBC can use that for whatever they want. But if um, Disney is doing any kind of direct production financial assistance, that gives them, if not direct creative input, at the very least leverage. And even if it's not direct, they could still potentially leverage that even if uh, the BBC is funneling that money elsewhere into the organization, Disney going, you know what? Maybe this is going in a direction where we don't want to renew the contract after this. That's a lot of money that the BBC would be missing out on. And it allows them to leverage some influence if they choose to. Now, whether or not we should expect Disney to do that uh, is a bit of a minefield topic because it kind of depends on who you ask. There's certainly lots of uh, the anti-woke outrage merchants out there who will tell you that Disney very much imposes a specific um, vision on all kinds of stuff. But the practical matter is that hasn't really been borne out, not on a large scale. Because the thing is, and like I'm going to make comparisons to things that Disney has acquired outright, because like I said, I don't have a, uh, a precedent for this kind of deal. So I'm going to make comparisons to times that Disney did buy stuff outright. Again, that doesn't mean I think they have or will bought Doctor Who outright, but that's just the best comparison I can make. Generally, what Disney has been doing is they have gotten hold of these various companies and done some of the normal restructuring stuff or maybe appointed a new head, like in the case of Lucasfilm. But Disney doesn't directly step in on those operations very much, especially in the case of something like Marvel. Disney basically bought them and said, keep doing what you're doing. You've got our money now so you can do more, but do your own thing. 
there's been very little indication of Disney directly exerting influence on something like Marvel. And even Star Wars, the buck does seem to stop with Kathleen Kennedy. Now, you can have your opinions on that, but if she is operating basically as the final word on Star Wars related material, at least as far as the entertainment output of it goes, then Disney as a greater entity isn't really interfering or doing a lot of creative input. What I expect Disney probably does have input on is things related to the amount of stuff made. I would not be shocked that if completely left to their own devices, neither Lucasfilm nor Marvel would be producing as much as often as they currently are. That wouldn't shock me if that's a, some amount of pressure from Disney, but that's not creative control. That's pushing for more product, which can impact the creative thing, but that's not really what people mean when they say creative control. Now, that doesn't mean that there's nothing to worry about because we can look at some of the stuff with, say, Pixar. Now, Pixar, since being acquired, has also largely been left as its own entity to be handled its own way. That having been said, some of the stuff that um, people spoke up about when the whole uh, Don't Say Gay bill that Disney uh, ended up getting roped into the discussion of, you can check out a video I made at the time if you don't know what went on there. It's lengthy. There was a lot to go through. But some of the stuff that came out when people started speaking up at that point was that Disney did specifically veto some of the stuff that creators wanted to put in these movies, specifically in terms of queer representation, that the higher ups, the people above the directors of certain films made at Pixar said, no, you can't have that in there. So it's not that Disney never exerts creative control, but it does seem to largely be sort of more generalized, no, please don't do that, as opposed to you must do this. Now, that still guides the shape of something. That is influence. But there is a difference between we demand that you do this and please don't do that. And there is a there is a difference. It's not completely just a arbitrary distinction because when you have been cut off from doing certain stuff, yes, that is a restriction. That is that is uh, someone coming in and restricting your creativity, but it does leave basically whatever else is left. So as long as they aren't doing a bajillion restrictions that leads you down this narrow field, they still got a lot of freedom in what you can do. On the other hand, if you are being told, okay, we expect this, 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 and this, then you're not giving options with maybe a couple of uh, paths locked off to you. They're just saying this, that's the path you take, walk that path. And that doesn't really rhyme with how Disney has been handling most of its IP that it's been outright acquiring. So I can't imagine that any influence it would have over Doctor Who would be any greater since it's not outright acquiring it. Now, what the BBC may or may not want to happen to do what it thinks will please Disney, that's where things get a little bit muddled and a little bit gray. And it's where like, yeah, maybe, but that's the kind of thing that's really hard to parse and nail down. And again, I expect some people will, I, I expect some people will flatly yell that Disney is responsible for any and all creative decisions that they personally don't like. But all of that will be at best unprovable. And I would also say a pretty big stretch. And it's also worth pointing out that while this is a new move for Disney, it's not a completely new move for the BBC. They have partnered on Doctor Who before, back in 1996, when they partnered with Fox to produce the TV movie that gave us Paul McGann as the Doctor. That was intended to serve as a backdoor pilot for a co-production with Fox. It ultimately did not pan out and didn't end up happening because the movie didn't perform well enough. But this is not an entirely new thing on the BBC's part in terms of doing some kind of partnering, partnering that does include creative input. Again, assuming that there is any creative input, which uh, given the source that seems to be the cause of all this speculation, I'm again kind of dubious about, but I still wanted to explore the possibility. What might that look like? Well, overall, I'd say if anything, it might be more likely to push the idea of spinoffs and additional material, which 
we already had Sony now owning Bad Wolf Productions, who probably would also want to push the idea of spinoffs and additional material because that creates more work for Bad Wolf Productions to do. So uh, I, I would say if anything is going to be the outcrop of this, it's making uh, is making new spinoffs um, much, much more likely. And there's been some reporting that RTD already has an interest in doing so. If he does, I just hope he doesn't jump onto it immediately. Just, just get, just, just get the main show like on solid footing first, please. Uh, we had we had a we had a tumultuous era. Let's get our feet under us before we start doing a bajillion spinoffs. Um, so if that happens, that would be something that I would say probably has some appeal to Disney because while not reported, I would imagine that this distribution deal probably includes any spinoffs that may or may not happen. So I think that's about all I've got. Um, I don't super trust this particular article because of the source, but I do think that it was worth exploring the notion of what that might look like, because if it's not the case now, Maybe it'll be the case in the future. And it's just one of those times. I don't often indulge what ifs. I don't often indulge if this is true, let's talk about what that means. But I guess I've been on a roll with Doctor Who content this week already. I thought I'd get this stuff out of my brain so I can maybe focus and do something else. Ah, what do you think about what I've talked about? What do you think about my assessment? Uh, whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon is what pays the bills around here. So if you are able to contribute any amount, it does get you perks at every support tier and it helps me out immensely. But even if you can't, like, share, subscribe, do help me out. And uh, that is always of great assistance as well. But what I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You are the council, I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. All right, time to thank my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfulla, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Oliver B, Melinda Walters, Ibu Delki, Leotha Boyd, Toy Loli, Becky Sparks, Phrenobulax, The Poodle, Zach, Bookworm, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Adam, R.D.L. Taylor, Shayla Gourlay, Brendan LaRose, and T.T. Thank you for your support. If you want to hear me try and say your name while this little guy tries to chew on my earrings, well, you can check out the Patreon or the support tiers that get you a shout out. Thanks so much. You are a pain in my butt.